Hi, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for coming to my talk. Um, in the next five minutes, I'm going to provide a very, very abbreviated introduction to Service Mesh. It's becoming an increasingly standard part of the cloud native platform. And uh, there have been some great talks this morning about advanced service mesh use cases, like the one that we just saw. But if you're sitting in the background of some of these talks and you're wondering, hey, what is this technology that everyone's talking about and what could it do for me as a security practitioner? That's, uh, that's what we're going to talk about now. So first, a little bit about me. My name is Tyler Shade. I live in Miami and I work at Solo, where we make cloud native networking simple and easy. For the last two and a half years, I've been working on building service mesh. And uh, this is sort of the introduction that I wish I had two and a half years ago when I first started learning about Mesh, joined Solo, and started working on it. Um, OK, so as a security practitioner, you're probably all too familiar with platform shifts, re-architecture initiatives. We're going to use this one technology. It's going to change everything. We need to rewrite all the code, right? You're probably also familiar with endlessly begging application developers to take things like security and zero trust more seriously. Maybe you're luckier to work at an organization that's further along in their journey, um, where you get a louder voice earlier on, where security has shifted left. But wherever you are, whatever your stage is in cloud native, um, a service mesh can help you make security more transparent, uniform, and widely adopted across all of your applications. So what exactly is a service mesh? A service mesh has a lot of definitions, but the one that I like the most is that it's a software-defined network that sits alongside your apps in your cluster, invis invisibly controlling and routing all traffic between workloads. Your apps don't even know it's there in most cases. It's completely transparent to them. But it sort of becomes the phone lines or the wiring in your cluster. So how does this actually work? In most implementations, this is accomplished by injecting lightweight sidecar proxies, most often Envoy-based, into your application pods. Traffic to and from the application is then redirected through these proxies creating a mesh network where all applications in the mesh communicate with each other via these proxies. So if we look at this diagram, um, this is a really simple Kubernetes cluster that has two services in it, reviews and ratings. Um, you are the blue stick figure, right? You are the administrator of this cluster. You configure what's called the service mesh control plane. So this is a centralized component that runs in your cluster and is responsible for injecting and configuring the sidecar proxies in your workloads. So you don't even have to go and update your Helm charts, right? The sidecars just are injected automatically by the control plane. Then traffic passes through these proxies. So let's say reviews in this arrow is calling the ratings pod, right? Whereas traditionally it would have been direct pod to pod, container to container. Um, in a service mesh, when reviews wants to talk to ratings, it's going to send a request to the reviews sidecar, which will then go to the ratings sidecar, which will then go to the ratings app. And then when ratings responds, it will go to the ratings sidecar, back to the reviews sidecar, and then back to your app. So this is sort of service mesh in a nutshell. Um, and if you're anything like me, when you look at this diagram, the first thing you're going to think is, why possibly would I want to do this? I already have 20, 50, 100 pods running in my cluster. Each has a container. Now you're telling me I'm going to be running and operating and giving compute to 200 containers. Why would I possibly do this? Um, architecturally, there's a lot of benefits that you get from this. Global observability, configurable traffic control, routing, load balancing. These are all easy to do with Service Mesh. But as someone who's at a security conference, I assume that you're focused on the security aspects of this. Um, and you're going to be most interested in global MTLS as well as uniform centralized security policy, um, regardless of what apps are actually running in your cluster. So on the MTLS end, MTLS doesn't have to actually be implemented into your apps to achieve end-to-end -end zero trust. So, uh, earlier on in my career, I worked uh, on an IoT platform, and we went through a year-long shift where we were trying to transform about 30 microservices to all use MTLS. And we were doing this by hand. We were implementing it. Uh, each service had to have its own certific certificates, all of that. It was a very, very painful process. Rolling this out was very challenging. Um, updating the code, making sure there was no downtime, huge pain point, right? In Service Mesh, MTLS is coordinated by the control plane and then with uh, certificate issuance and rotation. And then the sidecar proxies enforce MTLS between pods um, and terminate it so then your app doesn't have to be aware that there's even MTLS. It doesn't have to look at certificates. It's just there. 
Um, so that's the MTLS angle. Uh, the security policy angle, policy can be configured in the control plane, scoped by the workload, the namespace, or globally. Um, and so things like identity, JWT token validation, fine-grained access control, authorization policy, all are lifted out of your apps into the service mesh. So as a security practitioner or administrator, you get to focus on the security side and developers get to focus on business logic, right? So there's a good separation of concerns in this model. Um, hopefully this, this talk gave you a little overview of how service mesh works. We don't have much time to dive into all of it. Um, if sidecar sounds, sounds scary, uh, my colleague Lynn gave a great talk this morning about Istio Ambient. Uh, definitely check that out. That's sort of the future direction. Um, but then if you have any questions or want to chat more about cloud native networking, uh, service mesh, et cetera, I'll be at the solo booth. I'll be around all week. Thanks, everyone.